This short tutorial will demonstrate SLF4J's essential features. SLF4J provides an abstract logging API allowing the end user to plug in the desired logging framework, be it Logback Classic, Log4J, or Java Util Logging at deployment time. For this tutorial, I have chosen to use Eclipse, and more specifically, the Juno release for Java developers which bundles M2 Eclipse. So let's create a new project, a simple Maven project, and call it My Demo. It's a brand new project with no dependencies. Let's create a new class in the default package named my app with a static main method. Let's replace the code automatically generated by Eclipse with some simple code which uses the SLF4J API. The org SLF4J package cannot be resolved since our project has not yet declared dependency on the SLF4J API artifact. Now let's add a dependency on SLF4J API. Now if we save the changes, the compilation errors are gone. Let us have another look at the code of the MyApp class. After importing logger and logger factory classes, MyApp declares a static logger and assigns it by invoking logger factory's getLogger method. The return logger will be named after the fully qualified name of the MyApp class passed as argument. In the static main method, it invokes the info method of logger with the message hello world. It then proceeds to compute the sum of 2 plus 2 and print the result on the console. When we run my app, we see that SLF4J complains about not being able to load the static logger binder class. Additionally, SLF4J tells us that under the circumstances, it will default to a no operation or NOP logger implementation. SLF4J's plugin mechanism searches for the static logger binder class. In the absence of a binding, the static logger binder class cannot be loaded, and SLF4J defaults to a no operation implementation, which discards all log messages. It is important to note that the line 2 plus 2 is 4 is printed. Thus, even without a binding, the application can continue to function without any hindrance, albeit without logging. If you don't care about logging, and all you want is to get rid of the SLF4J warnings, just add SLF4J NOP as a dependency to your project. Here's a peek at the dependency hierarchy after the addition of SLF4J NOP. Now let's run the application. Lo and behold, the warnings are gone. To bind with a real logging framework, such as Logback Classic, a native implementation of the SLF4J API, we need to replace the SLF4J NOP dependency with a dependency on Logback Classic. Looking at the dependency tree, we note that declaring Logback Classic transitively pulled in Logback Core and SLF4J API as dependencies. Let's launch our application. It works. We get logging output generated by Logback. Instead of Logback Classic, let us bind with the good old Log4j version 1.2. For this, we need to replace the Logback Classic dependency with a dependency on SLF4j-Log4j12. Note that the SLF4j-Log4j12 dependency transitively pulls in Log4j version 1.2.17, the latest version in the 1.2 series. Launching our application yields warning messages output by Log4j, but the 2 plus 2 equals 4 line is still printed. Log4j is telling us to configure it properly because we have not yet set up a configuration file for it. Let's fix that now. 
Complete Look for J. Manuel, a book authored by yours truly, contains many sample log for j configuration scripts. I know by experience that towards the beginning of chapter 3 there's a script which logs on the console. So let's copy that. Let's, let's now create a configuration file, log for j properties. and paste the contents that we copied from the log4j manual. Run my app and we see that log4j generates proper logging output. Instead of log4j, let SLF4j bind with the Java util logging. For this, we replace the SLF4j dash log4j12 dependency with a dependency on SLF4j dash JDK14. Launching my app shows proper logging output generated by Java Util Logging. And that's it. Until next time.